Wasserfonds. Mike's Daily Podcast. Welcome, welcome to Mike, Mike, Matthews, Matthews. Mike's Daily Podcast. And it's FF episode 2644-2644. It's Mike Matthews, and I'm back for more. It's going to be a podcast that is from Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley 10. It's a nice hot day. It's hot. It's probably wherever you are or if you Mike's Daily Podcast are listening to this six months later. It's cold, cold, cold where you are probably. So, yeah. Mike's In the summer. Daily. All the people. Podcast. That are. Yeah. Uh, believers of climate change say, look, look what's happening. Gas in the air, greenhouse gases, and now this is what happens. And then in the winter when it gets super cold, all the people on the right are like, no, 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 see, it's too cold. There's no such thing as global warming. It's too cold. And it goes back and forth, back and forth. It's ridiculous. That's something I've noticed. Hey, it's a podcast where Mike notices things. Thank you for listening to it So Hollywood strike is continuing The strike uh, rolling up the red carpet Hollywood's picket lines could grow longer As more showbiz workers fight for better contracts So this has been going on since May There are something like 11,000 writers In the Writers Guild of America They went on strike to demand higher pay And stronger job protections Actors got in the spotlight With the SAG After Union Covering 160,000 entertainers Also failed to get better terms from studios A-listers from Meryl Streep To Jennifer Lawrence Prepared to strike If SAG didn't reach a deal The writer's strike is costing And here's today's Podcast picture. Ooh, I gotta find a podcast picture. Yeah, the writer strike is said to be costing California something like thirty million dollars a day, and if it runs over one hundred days, about eighty-one billion in direct wages from eight hundred thousand films and TV jobs could be at risk. Hollywood's lights reach beyond the stars. The film and TV biz creates two million plus jobs in the U.S. Contributing 186 billion in annual wages. A single film shot on location. Oh look, the late great Basil the Boxer. I filmed him many a time. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. I took a really good picture last night. Should I post this one? Yeah. Okay. This was last night up in the hills above Podcastro Valley, in this area we call Columbia. Though. Nobody is well. Maybe there's some people from Colombia there, but it's not the the state or the country. Rather, it's in the state of California, and it's I don't even think it's like a it's just like a little area called Colombia. I guess it's a HOA thing, and they called it Colombia. Anyway, see this picture. It's amazing. I'm just blown away. I was gonna post something like from Benicia or some other cool place I went to. During my week off But this is amazing See it at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com And I took Basil To the spot many times When he was on this earth So yes The film and TV biz Creates 2 million plus jobs In the US 186 billion dollars In annual wages And a single shot A single film That is shot on location Can add 250 thousand dollars A day To the local economy That includes hotels and they always got to have their veggie trays Even though I don't know I don't. I wonder how many actors and people working in the background The gaffers, the cinematographers, the, all the other folk Get sick off of like bad cheese on those veggie trays Well I guess that's not a cheat Cheese is not a veggie But still, there's often cheese And crudite hay and all that Tinseltown could lose its sparkle as studios look outside The U.S. Netflix, for instance, uh, in the U.S., Netflix said it would spend $2.5 billion on Korean content in the next few years. They hit a home run 
with the Squid Games TV show thingy. And that was like all the rage. Was that? That was maybe two years ago. <laughs> in fact, next Netflix has an extra one point five billion dollars in cash flow thanks to the strike. This, according to Fortune. dot com, Eleanor Pringle wrote this. Striking Hollywood writers aren't hurting streaming giants like Netflix. Um, this is something that came out on Thursday. This fair and on. Quite like they wanted to They're not striking uh, Netflix In fact It's freeing up Over a billion dollars In cash for the business In their Quarterly call For The second quarter This year In their earnings call Netflix CEOs Ted Sarandos And Greg Peters Outlined their desire To bring the strike To a close As soon as possible But The pair Sidestep claims That they were going To run out of content For the platform Adding that they had Increased their Free cash flow Forecast For 2023 From 3.5 billion To 5 billion dollars Right As a result Of shuttered production First of all, I just want to Just um, thank everyone For joining us Here on this show This is great uh, He was interviewed This is Ted Sarandos He was interviewed By Bank of America's Analyst Jessica Reif Ehrlich And he said He came from a union family Himself adding These strikes are not An outcome That we wanted We We're uh, Super committed To getting to an agreement As soon as possible One that's Equitable <laughs> And one that enables the industry and everybody to move forward into the future. Okay. All right. Let's go. And so members of the Writers Guild, which is uh, reportedly around 6,000 members, have refused to work since May 2nd. They were then followed by the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, known as SAG-AFTRA. That happened starting uh, on the 13th of this month. The last time SAG after a Hollywood's largest union, which represents 160,000 film and television actors, joined the Writers Guild of America, that was in 1960. So what they did in response to that TV, since there were no shows, they just ran movies all the time. Though this is actually in the year 1960, before you Baloney. were born. Probably Bef- Definitely before I was born what in, what in the world is that about? The current strike arose out of demands for increase in pay As well as writers and actors asking for a greater portion of earnings from shows and movies that appear on streaming services As we go outside a cafe anyway where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley Ten, the last place on earth um, the, That's about that So the bottom line is It Could be further The bottom line could be Further boosted This is the bottom line Their bottom line Could be further boosted By Netflix announcing It was pulling its lowest price Ad subscription Of $9.99 a month Customers already on the plan Can continue with it But new or returning signups Won't be able to access The bottom rung Of the pricing ladder It gone Mike's Daily Podcast Master Pod Beater. Despite sales growing 2.7% in the quarter to $8.19 billion, Netflix's uh, quarter for the third quarter expectations failed to impress Wall Street. As a result, shares in Netflix fell by approximately 7%. This was on Thursday morning. So, there we go. Now... It has something to do with AI. A lot of these script writers going, hey, they're going to use AI to write all the, 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 well, most TV shows and movies seem like they were written by AI. I mean, Fast and Furious, part 27,000, whatever it is on now, it must be AI. Well, Sarah Silverman is not laughing when it comes to the AI company ChatGBT. She's now suing OpenAI and Meta, along with two other authors named Christopher Golden and Richard Cadry, alleging that ChatGBT and LLAMA, or LAMA, is that LAMA, have both been trained on the trio's copyrighted books. 
Silverman, Golden, and Kadri argue in the respective complaints, which were filed on July 7th here in Northern California, that OpenAI's ChatGBT and Meta's Lama were trained on copyrighted material, which included published literary works from the trio. While both OpenAI and Meta make mention that they do not train on copyrighted material, the authors allege that some of the training data and that's what it, you know, all that AI does. All, all of its uh, guts come from data that it is trained on. So it could come from all kinds of places. And this is very interesting that Sarah Silverman is saying, hey, calling them out. That some of the training data came from a shadow library of sources like Library Genesis, Z Library, Sci Hub, and Bibliotech, which are interest, internet based torrent repositories that include copyrighted books. In an exhibit from the author's lawsuit, the plaintiffs asked ChatGBT to recite excerpts from Silverman's book, The Bedwetter, to which it relayed passages from the memoir Verbatim. By the way, when AI, when you do chat GBT and you ask it a question and it gives you an answer, but the answer is completely wrong, they call that an AI hallucination. <laughs> That's what I heard from one tech guy today. Silverman opened AI and Meta did not immediately return Gizmodo's request for comment. This article came from Gizmodo. And it was written by Kevin Hurler. We That's love you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we pay Mike What's... the big bucks, <laughs> or someone pays. Him. Absolutely. So we'll zero. see where this yeah. ends uh, up. Sarah Silverman. She's got her own podcast now, where she talks to people, just random people, not like celebrities, and they ask her questions. That's what it is. They come up with a, some bizarre questions, and she answers it like. Life questions Like Is it a good idea For me to quit Drinking milk Or you know That kind of thing That's a nightmare Of a show Disney my the, Is My Well I don't own Any Disney stock And I've known Many people that have And they used to go Ooh I have Disney stock Look at me I love Disney Look at all these Big blockbuster movies They come out with Well Things took a turn somewhere in the past couple of years. And now they got Bob Iger back. And check this out. Visitors to Disney theme parks are encountering something they haven't seen in a while. Elbow room. Yes, it was so crazy busy like a year ago. And then they launched that Star Wars hotel. And that's tanking. That's going to close up in very soon. Nobody was staying there. I mean, that was ridiculous. Ridiculous. To be... <laughs> that you were spending like thousands of dollars a night to stay in a hotel where like all the windows are blacked out and they're just doing some fancy effects that the Imagineers have come up with. And then you've got all these cast members, quote unquote, aka Disney employees, that are dressed in all these very impressive outfits from the Star Wars movies. Life grand. <laughs> what? It was basically dinner theater. And I've seen video of it. Danger, Will Robinson. Oh my gosh. The acting is horrible. <laughs> it's like This is dinner theater This could have just been done I don't know In a bad uh, Dinner theater somewhere Or did they do those on boats now? Cruise ships? I guess they do the, that kind of thing on cruise ships too Like a murder mystery Who murdered so and so? You gotta fi figure it out Not an escape room thing but So people were paying all that money for that And it just wasn't turning out to be what anybody really wanted to do I mean it was some idiots That are <laughs> Going to be opinionated here That never grew up That let's say You know they were born in the late 60s 
or in the 70s and they remember when Star Wars came out and they grew up with it. Now they got kids and they want their kids to be exposed to it. Or maybe now they have had their, they've got grandkids and they want to show them the world of Star Wars. Oh, what an experience to bond. No. No. Find something. A goat. So you're hearing all these birds behind me and the beautiful wind blowing through the trees and a creek and something else going on behind Cafe Anyway somewhere in Podcast Valleyton. That's where you need to be with your grandkids. They're out there in the great whatever. That's not going to be there forever. I guarantee Star Wars is going to be around forever. Because there's going to be some idiot that's going to pay for a Star Wars movie or to get Disney Plus to watch some Star Wars. There's always going to be somebody who, who's a sucker born every minute, P.T. Barnum, and just keep digesting this stuff. It just makes no sense to me why anyone would spend that amount of money. And most of the stuff Disney does. I don't get it. It's too mu- it, it, it costs too much. This is interesting. Wow, this is interesting. I can't believe. What the hell is this place anyway? And I don't see why that's a thing. You know, you're all the way in Florida. Why don't you go to the beach? Orlando is not near the beach. You got to take a drive. Yeah. <laughs> you're in the middle of the state. You got to go to either to the east or the west. Go to the ocean there. The Gulf or the... Atlantic and get in the water. Look out for the sharks. Wow, 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 wow. The sand sharks and everything else. But get out there and explore life. Dang it. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't care for that. They're if they're not doing this Disney stuff, they're on the computer playing video games and getting wrapped up in the latest whatever thing Activision's doing or Microsoft or whatever Well visitors to theme parks this summer Are encountering elbow room The Independence Day weekend was one of the Slowest in nearly a decade That blows my mind I just thought this was going to be packed Those Disney parks are going to be packed forever But can you imagine anything worse You probably can but can you imagine How awful it would be Hi there Mike how are you In a crowded Disney amusement park There in the middle of freaking Florida Where it's so hot and so humid And you're sweating your eyeballs out I've been there, I've done it I went there with my mom to Disney World It was a dream come true, it was fun Because she and I had been to Disneyland in Anaheim many times When I was a kid (laughs) Will you shut up? Liberty Nation Freedom Foam for All And some little kid stepped on my mom's foot And my mom had very sensitive feet In fact she ended up Losing a leg She had all kinds of circulation issues uh, Peripheral artery disease And all that stuff And it wasn't because of the kid That she lost the leg But she eventually did But these kids They're just it, It was packed They had nowhere to go But on top of my mom's feet Wrong So I would not want to be there I love watching the YouTube videos Of people that go to Disney World Just to watch them suffer Is it sadistic of me? But then there's a part of me that wishes I was there with them. Oh, that looks kind of cool. But ooh, no, look how hot it is and and it's starting to rain and there's nowhere for them to go. They got to just stay underneath that awning somewhere on Main Street or in Tomorrowland or whatever. We came out of, so this is how far back it was. My mom and I came out of the alien encounter Ride, which ended long ago. They replaced it then with that uh, Lilo and Stitch character um, th- having sort of the same storyline as Alien Encounter, but with Lilo and Stitch. And then they closed it. And it, I don't know what it is now. But we came out of that, and it is thunder and lightning. And I saw lightning hit the top of the rocket ship. Thing there's these uh, there's a rocket that's pointed up at the sky, and it's got a lightning rod at the top. So I saw lightning hit that, and this it spins around and it's got little rockets sailing around it. They got one in Florida. They got one in Anaheim. I don't know if they've got one in Shanghai and Hong Kong and, and Europe. Where else do they have Disney? So apparently in Oklahoma they're going to have a huge. Amusement park that they're building That's supposed to be as big as Any of the Disney parks The Independence Day weekend Was one of the slowest In nearly a decade Disney is offering hotel discounts Around Christmas 
That's typically a peak period. So if you're into that, that would be something to look into. The slowdown is the latest sign that Disney's recent price hikes and changes to park operations have actually, oh, check that. Can you believe this? Have actually soured some families on visiting the most magical place on earth. Wow. That blows my mind because I thought everybody was sheeple and just going to keep going to those places. But no, at some point, you cross a line. I forget the CEO who preceded. Bob Iger, but he obviously didn't know that. Disneyland saw the cost of multi-day tickets by 9% or more in October with the price of a two-day ticket rising from $255 per day. Yes, that would be a two-day ticket to $285 a day uh, for the two-day ticket. Disney, and I remember going there as a kid and it must have been what 10 or 20 bucks A day Disney faces a unique set of challenges right now From streaming losses People are getting fed up with their Disney Plus To executive succession To a legal fight With Florida Governor Ron DeSantis And his war Against woke But what's funny about that is Yes A lot of woke of The woke movement a lot of that is a little pushed to the extreme and can be ridiculous and can be overly sensitive about some things that you're just like, wait, what? But the other side of it is people being completely insensitive and just not caring at all about what how other people feel. And then all of a sudden we're back in the 50s again. And there's all these people that are being shunned that shouldn't be shunned. We should be enjoying each other, you know, Paying attention to each other Being respectful to each other Is what I think I'm trying to say here That's all at, In its purest form What woke should be But instead it's turned into this bad word To all the people on the right It seems Oh and speaking of movies Now Disney didn't make this movie But The Flash is now the worst box office flop In superhero film history it had a budget of $220 million. That was in making the movie. And then in a $150 million promotional budget, it only made about $200 million. So that is the latest there. I got that news. Oh, and Etsy jumped 8% recently in their stock. And that just shows people love Etsy. Etsy had some problems though Didn't they have to Shut down for a while Recently Or was that A couple months ago And That would be The latest I got that from Rob Black I produce his podcast He's got Rob Black In your money He's on the local TV He's on The local radio Here in the Bay Area And I produced his show Yesterday morning on the board adding sound effects and fun things but it was so early but it was a lot of fun and then uh, I produce his podcast Monday through Friday so we're outside a cafe anyway somewhere in Podcaster Valley the last place on earth and you know we, the last podcast picture was from Podcaster Valley Lake Chabot and those cool little kayaks you can see it at mikesdailypodcast.com and that was a fun podcast where we were talking about dream jobs. But look who's here right now. Hello, Mike Matthews. It's feeling too hard to get a job supervisor. Wow, it is incredibly hot today, Mike Matthews. Have a snow globe. Oh, yeah. These are the snow globes that are made out of snow. This is fantastic. It just melted in my hands. In my hands again. Wow, Mike Matthews. That sounds like a song. I think it was a band. I remember the song was called Hemorrhage in My Hands. Oh man Now I gotta find out It's Is it gonna come back to my head uh, Before I can remember The name of the band Nope I can't remember It was Fuel That's it Fuel I say the word fuel wrong I end up saying fill Most of the time Fuel Okay That's interesting Look who else is here Mike it's 
Mikey Fikey. Oh, Mike, Great. this is Floyd the Floorman. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Have you gotten to your segment yet about when you were on the radio years and years ago, Mike Matthews? Mm-hmm. By the way, Ron DeSantis is going after Anheuser-Busch now over that Dylan Mulvaney promotion. He's threatened them. Uh, he said, let's see, he's hinting at legal action against Bud Light's parent company, Anheuser-Busch, for the beer brand's promotion earlier this year with the TikTok star. TikTok. I just don't get that. I'm, I'm not on TikTok, please. Bud Light's March Madness promotion with Mulvaney, a transgender actress and activist, it sparked an uproar among some conservatives. And Travis Tritt and Kid Rock. <laughs> who called for a boycott of the popular beer Travis Tritt, a country star from the 90s that was quite popular an ongoing sales slump for Bud Light has been attributed to backlash from both conservatives and the LGBTQ there's a P in there now over the marketing campaign in an interview With Fox News, DeSantis said that Florida's pension fund contained over $50 million worth of Anheuser-Busch shares. Bud Light's decision to team with Mulvaney was followed by a sales slump, and as a result, the state's pension fund has suffered collateral damage. When you start pursuing a political agenda at the expense of your stakeholders, that's not just impacting very wealthy people. It impacts hardworking people who are firefighters, police officers, and teachers. There's, I just look at that clip of Dylan drinking the beer or promoting the beer, and that just seems like all kinds of they just did it for the money. There, who would watch that and actually go, Oh, I think I'll be, drink a Bud Light now? Who would even be? I know they're supposed to be quote unquote influencers, but who would be that dumb? I don't get it. It, it was a weird move by Bud Light. And I just despise influencers of all types, no matter what they espouse. It's just ridiculous what has become is ridiculous about what we have, how this whole industry has arisen, arose. And I mean, I come from the radio world and DJs have been quote unquote influencers in their own right. You know, the general manager comes up to the morning DJ and says, hey, we just signed this account with us, this company, this local business in town, a bar. And they, they, they're signing because they want you to talk about them on the air and promote it. And in re- return, you're going to get a little money for it. And so that would be the, the way that system worked in radio. Well, now there's this whole system. It's opened up to... Thousands and thousands of influencers on all types of social media. And it's opened it up maybe to even you. I mean, everybody's going to get a cut of this at some point because I think we're all influencers in our own way. I mean, how many times have you told somebody, wow, have you tried the burger at whatever place or have you tried the Thai food or the whatever? You know, we're always espousing how wonderful certain restaurants are. Or certain movies or oh you gotta see this oh have you listened to this song and when we do that we're influencers but we don't get paid anything as I was talking about in the last podcast with I'm not going to be in any political party's pocket unless they pay me and it, it better be a big check and then of course I would let you know because that's not right <laughs> If, if I were getting paid and I didn't tell you, I mean, hey, I've got this opinion about something. Oh, by the way, they're making they're giving me a big chunk of change. But that's not going to happen anytime soon, because you know what the blessing is of this podcast? Very few people listen, if at all. And I know that because I give out the phone number all the time and nobody ever calls it at 510-228-4640. And I'm sure nobody calls it because I say it so fast. But you can find it at my website, mikesdailypodcast.com. But you know what it is time for now? It is time for... Let's Let's Go go Back back with with Matthews. Matthews. Live and loco. So back in the days before influencers, when radio was cool, just a short 
20 years ago, a 20 year hop back in time, we were just starting to really see the whole world of internet starting to explode. Um, it w- people were getting computers, logging onto the internet, and that was that. There was no cell phones yet. There were cell phones, but no smartphones. Now, smartphones allow you to log onto the internet in no time at all. But back then, 20 years ago, just a short hop, you needed a computer or a laptop and hooked into the network. And just a few short years before that, you needed a freaking modem and a phone and that awful noise that So in these early days of the internet, I got to do a show on a country station of all places with someone named Jocelyn. And Jocelyn got into the whole internet world early on. She started her own business where she would help people advertise in the internet space, get them all set up in the internet space, be sort of a cyber advisor. I myself found out about the website service that I still use to this day for mikesdailypodcast.com from her. She gave me a suggestion. I took it. And she was, I, I think she's still doing what, it might still be called JR Media. I haven't checked it out lately and I haven't spoken to her lately. But we did a little thing on Wednesday nights. It was like Worldwide Webs Day on Wednesday nights, late at night on the country station Kehe in Ventura County, where I was on the air for 11 years. And for about a year until it got canceled, <laughs> because not because of the show being controversial or anything, but because my boss got fired. And when he left, the new boss came in and he goes, no, you're not going to do that. You're just going to play country music and you're not going to talk at all. And that, that, that put the end on what we also called it Cyber Night. So Cyber Night ended right about this time on Kehe. So here's a little bit of that. And this is fascinating to me. I, I pulled this off of a cassette recently, actually during my little vacation uh, not last week, but the week before. And this blows my mind listening to some of this. So here we go with uh, Let's Go Back with Matthews. Yeah, you can answer any question, <laughs> Jocelyn. Sure I can. Cyber Diva, Jocelyn, with your question. It's Martina McBride. KHAY, Matt Michaels at the KH Santa Fe Cafe. That's Trace Atkins, the St. No Thinking Thing. It is Cyber Night at the cafe. We're learning all kinds of fascinating things from Jocelyn. And, ma'am, do you have, you had a. Oh, by the way, that, that lady that I'm addressing is someone named Maha. And she was the promotions director. So we did a lot of stuff in the community. And not only did she make sure that promotions were going on for our station but there were three other stations in the building and so she was very busy and she was there late this night and she was friends with Jocelyn and myself so she hung out and I don't know if she had a couple of beers or something had maybe a cocktail a little bit earlier in the evening but this got kind of fun did, did you ever find your Windows Explorer? I, I, I found them, but I lost them again. Okay. <laughs> that testy Windows Explorer just keeps... Wait a minute. No, that's not Maha. That's somebody else that worked there named Neri. <laughs> Neri got married, and unfortunately, her family didn't come to the wedding. It was just all of us from work, and then the groom, everybody from his family showed up. So we were there kind of representing her family. It was an interesting moment. Beautiful wedding. It was in Agoura Hills, California at this hotel, but it was hot. Oh my gosh. Imagine how hot it is today. And that's what it was in Agoura Hills where it gets really hot and it was outside and then inside uh, for the reception inside of the hotels where it was held in the banquet room. Beautiful. Every table had this amazing what do they call it? A, a table plant of some kind. Beautiful art. What a, flowers and stuff. It nice pot uh, arrangement. You know what I'm saying. It was decorated nicely. 
and there were a lot of empty tables. But we were we were just happy to be there. It was an interesting experience. And that was Neri. I hope she's doing well. I know the marriage didn't last, but that was a very memorable wedding. Just disappearing. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, what do you got there, Jocelyn? Actually, I was just going to ask Maha what her name means. In, uh, Maha, what does your name mean? It's a baby deer in Arabic. A baby, baby deer. deer in Arabic. And you know where she got that definition? Where is that? From behindthename.com. You can oh. go to behindthename.com and type in your name, and it'll tell you what your name means. It's entomology. Have you heard of that, Matt? Entomology. It's the history of first names. I mean, I don't know what it is. All my friends are having babies, like, left and right, and they want to know what to name their kids. So you can go to this website, and it'll give you some ideas of what you can name your baby. Nombres, right? So, right, where, where it says search here, I'm on it right now. Search. Okay, put, put it. Put in your name. Matt Michael. Matt. Just Matt. Okay, and types. Type. Oh, there you go. Short form of Matthew. So click on Matthew. Okay. I'm and it'll tell us. This is so exciting. It's the English form of Matthios, which was a Greek form of the Hebrew name Matt and Hayu, which meant gift of Yahweh, which, you know, Yahweh is in Hebrew is the translation for God. Right. So gift of God. You're the gift of God, Matt. <laughs> Saint Matthew was also called Levi and was also one of the 12 apostles. So, and he was a tax collector. That's perfect. So all of us out there named Matt, or if you're a lady named <laughs> Daddy, <laughs> I bet that's you. Bet you feel good right now. Yes, right? Yeah. yes. Okay, that's right. You Thank can go there at behindthename.com, type in your name, and it'll tell you the history of your name. If Isn't I can, cool? ba- if I can back this up, I want to go to Jocelyn. Okay, go ahead. Oh, great! I backed up too far. <laughs> now I'm on khay.com. No one ever knows how to spell my name, Matt. Oh, all right. And where can they, by the way, go to ask you any questions if you have any email? Yeah, they can go to jrnewmedia.com and click on contact and fill out the web form. Awesome. And, they and can call all us. the links, Matt, that we mentioned are up by tomorrow morning on khay.com. They just click on your face <laughs> and they can find I, all the links. Which I feel that, by the way. Yes, put, yes. Matt does feel it. <laughs> every time they, they've uh, connected electrodes into my face. It's, Ow! Someone's clicking on my face now. <laughs> I kind of like that. Okay, Jocelyn. <laughs> We have I'm German. I'm little Fraulein, okay? No, it's actually, Jocelyn was a surname, meaning it was a last name first, and then it was translated from French to German and became a first name. So that I kind of knew already. I kind of knew that. That's not very exciting. I like Maha's better. Yeah, we'll call you Maha the rest Baby of Baby deer, huh? Is that what it was, Maha? Yes. Isn't that a doe? Doe is a deer, a oh, female deer. Oh, female deer. deer. Oh, sorry, sorry. And Ray is a drop of golden stud. <laughs> Me. A name I yeah. call myself. Because the hills are alive. Four. With the, Your questions at 650-KHAY for Jocelyn. By the way, it's been behindthename.com. Entomology. Lots Much of fun. fun. You'll have fun all night with that if you check that out. And we have Jocelyn with us here on Cyber Night. 650-KHAY. This is Colin Ray with Little Rock. Well, I know I do so. By the way, BehindTheName.com still exists. Wow. After all that 20 years, <laughs> it's uh, interesting me. I wonder if 650K hey, still works. I'm not going to try calling that. Right now. Time or two. 100.7 KHAY. That is Garth Brooks, two of a kind, working on a full house. We aren't talking about anything computer related right now. We're working in a full house. That's definitely That's true. For it sure. is crowded here at the K Santa Fe Cafe. Always. I don't know how the, the story turned to Julio Iglesias and Patty LaBelle. Oh, you can see them all at the Chumash Casino. That's right. Up. Chew the Chew. That's what we call it. At the Chew. Mm-hmm. K. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, all the, and we're, we were trying to figure out, I guess, where, where is it? Smokinggun.com. Mm-hmm. You can find find out where uh, how much people when, when celebrities go and play at a concert hall what they ask for yeah it's, stuff. it can get pretty ridiculous because I one time was the um, grand marshal of the Christmas parade in the Channel Islands Harbor and they asked me what do I want you know you can have anything you want to drink oh and what did you ask for Matt root beer <laughs> I don't think they wanted to give you root beer. And because at the time, 
because at the time the gra- the gal I was dating she was a bit of a drinker <laughs> and so and she liked Pete's Wicked Ale so we went with that <laughs> well that's a good choice but if you do, if you go to thesmokinggun.com, you can see all these, um, you know, famous stars and, and their writers, meaning what oh. they are asking for of the concert promoter to set up for them. And I know Madonna, she has to have, for her children, like their playrooms have to be packed up and then set up at each venue for her children. Two different playrooms. Yes. High demands. Oh, my gosh. Oh, well, these guys, they ask for everything. <laughs> Hello, Matt Michaels. Hello, Jocelyn. Hi, Hi, Sharon. How are you? I'm fine. Ozzy's fine, too. I love Ozzy. <laughs> what was that, Sharon? He's upset because Matt Michaels usually has in some of the the, dry, the writers. Is that what you called it? Yes. He, and uh, Matt didn't put anything in here today. <laughs> There's nothing, no M&M's, none of the M&M's he likes. Well, I know Ozzy likes his special water. Okay. Right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and I think he also... He's taking your water now, Jocelyn. He likes uh, Swiss chocolates, right? Uh, you know, I, I'm tired of this. I'm just going to pour root beer right in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy, take it easy. Thank you, Matt Michael. <laughs> no problem. I'm here to help. And so is Jocelyn with your questions mm-hmm. at 650-K-E-Y about computers. Computers. Cyber night tonight. We're getting a lot of interesting questions. 650-K-E-Y. Kenny Chesney, this is what I need to do at the K.H. Santa Fe Cafe. Yeah! 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 Pete's Wicked Ale was discontinued in 2011, so you may not even remember it. And we're going to go back and a little bit further now t- at the end here of the podcast. We're going to go back know, roll. to 2000. We're, we're out of the 2000s. We're not in the 90s. We're in the 80s now. In 1989, this is how yours truly sounded. I was working at the station in Santa Barbara called Y97. That no longer exists either. That was discontinued. I think 97.5. Is it Spanish now? Or is it Cruz? I forget. I'm not sure what it is, being that I am I am up here in the Bay Area. And I don't... Smokinggun.com is also gone, by the way. But let's go back to the 80s and hear a little bit of Mike in 1989. KHGY 197 in Levert, Casanova. Hello, I'm Mike Matthews. And I am the Y97 substitute DJ. I'm I'm here every once in a while, but not all the time. So you can't like turn on your radio and say, okay, at exactly 4:30, Mike will be there. No, no, I'm here from time to time. I'm like the wanderer, the wanderer. Yes. Anyway, uh, well, that just wrapped up a 60-minute power play, and that was by request uh, out to someone in Santa Barbara. We have another request, um, new sensation going out to Leela. We'll be playing that in just a little bit. But first, we'll be playing, playing "Lost in Your Eyes" by Debbie Gibson. Uh, in just a few minutes, but let me tell you, the volunteer tutors are needed to work with a needy families for only a couple of hours a week. English, Spanish volunteers are also in need. If you would like to help, call the Vista Family Literacy Project at 564-3095. They're in need of bilingual volunteers. So that number again, 564-3095 in the public interest for 197. If you have not yet prepared your will, please listen uh-huh. to... Oh, I wonder if they're still around for tutoring help. <laughs> Mike Matthews on the Nocturnal Express working on a 60 minute power play on KHDY Santa Barbara with a song out to Holly Eternal Flame Uh, We were also playing Debbie Gibson earlier One more, one more KHGY 197 Hello, I'm Mike Matthews The 197 Substitute DJ sitting in for Geigen Now I'm going to take care of both a request and a dedication at the same time Do I have to say this? Okay, this is to Tracy, from Tracy to Martin in Santa Barbara. I love you. <laughs> so embarrassing. White Lion. Little child. Aw. Little child. White Lion. They also had that song. Wait, wait, I never had the chance to love you. Sounds like Cartman singing. I never want to say I love you seriously one more time. There you go. 
Well, that was your request and dedication, and that's the end of today's show. If you would like to call in and, I don't know, comment, make fun of me, this show was a bit long. If you'd like to talk about why I maybe went a little longer than usual with all these stories, so many stories, and if you'd like to comment on that, 510-228-4640. And with more ways to reach me, it's A-Frank. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.